With regard to sin in our lives, it's not usual that a person's first sin is on the more serious end of the scale. For example, the man who cheats on his wife has probably allowed adultery of the heart to go unchecked long before he ever physically goes down that route. His heart and his eyes have long betrayed his marriage vows before his body seals the deal. The person who commits a murder probably has allowed anger to fester and to manifest itself in his or her life in less violent ways first before any act of killing is committed. The person who robs a bank possibly began much earlier and on a much smaller scale, stealing a few bars of chocolate from the shop here and there or taking a few coins from a family member's purse. Now, I'm not saying that everyone who struggles with lust will inevitably commit adultery, or that everyone who is angry will become a murderer. If that were the case, there would be nothing much left of what is good in this world. But a big oak tree begins from a small acorn, and big things are usually rooted in allowing smaller things to go unchecked, and to grow to something enormous. I remember as a child of about 10 that I stole 20 pence from my mother's purse. I was riddled with guilt and so about 15 minutes later I put it back in her purse. My mother never knew. But if I had not put it back she probably would not have noticed. But I knew, and I knew that God knew. I chose to put it back, but I had the choice to not put it back. After all, no one would ever know. Getting away with it once might have emboldened me to do it again, and in no time at all, I might have found myself being a bit of a thief without much thought of how wrong it was, or perhaps justifying my thievery as something not that serious. Thank God I had a sensitive conscience as a ten-year-old boy, and I can't recall ever having any big temptation to steal anything from that moment on. Today's Gospel passage is situated in the first Holy Week. It is a few days before Christ's passion and death and Jesus is spending time with his friends and closest confidants. Martha, Mary and Lazarus are friends with whom he had stayed before when he was in the area. And of course, the twelve are with him. His apostles who have been with him on a daily basis for three years. Judas Iscariot was among them, a man chosen by Christ himself to be in that inner circle of his closest collaborators and trusted friends. During those three years, Judas would have witnessed all of Jesus' miracles and heard all of his teaching. Indeed, we know from the Gospel that all of them, the apostles, would have been sent out to work miracles and cast out devils in Jesus' name. That's a really disturbing thought, that an apostle, especially chosen by the Lord and empowered to great, do great and wondrously miraculous things for Christ and with Christ, should be so unchanged by his daily contact with the Lord that he would come to be forever known as the one who betrayed Jesus. Judas had work, worked miracles in Jesus' name, but betrayed him. Judas had devils submit to him when he used Jesus' name. But at the Last Supper, Satan, we are told, enters him, overcomes him. It seems he used Jesus' name, but he did not in his heart of hearts Believe in Jesus. The Gospel tells us that Judas was a thief. 
Now, stealing is certainly a sin. But it isn't the same thing as being willing to sell out your friend and have a hand in getting him killed. It seems that avarice and a greed for money lead Judas to that ultimate betrayal of Christ. He will sell Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. But it probably began with smaller things. A little bit of dishonesty here and there, taking a few coins for himself. Sure, no one will even notice. But sin is always a slippery slope. For Judas, there was probably an incremental slide into theft and greed for money. And bit by bit, he was distancing himself from the Lord in his heart, mind and soul, even though he lived with him day in and day out. And if it can happen to Judas, it can happen to any of us. For three years, the Lord Jesus was knocking on the door of Judas's heart. And yet he failed to gain any real entrance, failed to get through to him. In tomorrow's Gospel at Mass, we will hear how Jesus is troubled in spirit at the Last Supper, declaring his soul's anguish that one of his nearest and dearest was going to betray him. How could Judas be so cold, calculated and treacherous with Jesus? Did he take anything on board over the previous three years? How is it that he could be around Jesus all day, every day, and not be deeply impressed and utterly changed by what he saw, heard and experienced? His sin, it seems, had hardened his heart, and a hard heart has no entry point for the Lord's grace and mercy, not because that grace and mercy are unavailable, but because a hard heart does not want grace and mercy. It wants what it wants, and what it wants is not God. If you take a stone and drop it into a pool of water, you can leave it there for a minute, an hour, or a week. It is completely submerged in and surrounded by the water, but regardless how long you leave it in that pool, the moment you take it out, it begins to dry off. Not dry out, mind you, dry off. Because though it is immersed in the water, it is interiorly untouched by a single drop. The stone is so hard that it is impenetrable to the water. I think this is a good image for Judas and his heart. He was daily surrounded by the grace, power and beauty of God's love being poured out upon him from the holy heart of Christ. But it never penetrated into him. And so it never really changed him. His heart was harder than a rock. And in his betrayal of Jesus, it proved itself to be colder than stone. Now, for the entire duration of my adult life, which is almost 25 years now, in the church, we have been shocked and dismayed at the sins, scandals, crimes and betrayals perpetrated by those we always thought of as those specially chosen by the Lord. How could these priests and religious have done the things which have come to light? How could they preach and serve and minister under the banner of Christ and yet carry out these heinous deeds which are a complete contradiction to everything Christ stood for? How could they live this double life, all sweetness and light on the outside, but hiding and harboring within themselves a darkness and a hardness of heart that utterly betrayed their mission and their Lord and that brought such suffering and wounds upon their victims. In the days and perhaps years after that first Good Friday, I am sure that the other apostles might well have been asking the same questions about Judas. How could he have done 
this terrible thing. Judas is forever known as the traitor. But he can only be a traitor if he has a relationship with Christ. A non-believer cannot abandon the Christian faith. He or she never had it in the first place. A non-Christian cannot betray Christ. He or she does not have our relationship with him. Yes, a non-believer can do bad things. A non-Christian can oppose Christ. But only the friend of Christ, a brother or sister of the Lord, can be said to betray him. You and I are friends of Christ, his brethren, his followers, and the people he has chosen as his own. It is important that we examine our lives to see where we have let little compromises creep in, smaller sins we may be ignoring because we think they're no big deal. Imagine a husband saying to his wife, how far can I pursue this other woman before you get upset, honey? How unfaithful can I be, darling, with her before you leave me? The obvious answer is that he should do none of these at all. But it can happen that our attitude to our commitment to the Lord and doing things as the Lord would have them can be a bit like that less than ideal husband. Our attitude should never be, how much can I get away with? How unfaithful can I be to Christ before I am in big spiritual bother? Our attitude should be, how can I be more faithful to my Lord? And if we are faithful to him in small things, things that maybe no one else sees, then it's not likely that we will betray him in much more serious matters.